let's write some code to decrease liquidity in a position we've provided to Uniswap V3. So you would decrease liquidity if you've staked tokens on Uniswap to earn fees, and now you want your tokens back. So we're going to write some code and run it to get these tokens back to our wallet. Normally in my tutorials, I walk you through all the setup, creating the files, doing the imports, but I wanted to get straight to the point this time. So I'm just going to explain what I have set up so far, and then we'll get into writing the code for getting your liquidity back. <clears throat> so I've imported Ethers JS, and I've gotten the ABI for the non-fungible position manager. And then I've defined some environment variables for my for the infra URL testnet, for my wallet address, and for my wallet secret. Those are stored in this .m file. Um, obviously, use your own. And then I've also defined the address of the position manager, which is the contract we use when dealing with liquidity on Uniswap. The first thing we need to do is set up a provider. So I will just call that provider and I will say new ethers.providers.json RPC provider. And then I'm going to pass in the URL for the infra testnet. Now I'm going to initialize a local instance of that non-fungible position manager contract. So I will just call that the non fungible position manager contract and we will say new ethers dot contract and then we will pass in its address we'll pass in its ABI and we'll pass in a provider now that we have that we're just going to set up our wallet and our code so we will do wallet equals new ethers wallet and then I'm going to pass in my wallet secret and then I'm going to connect this so we will call this connected wallet connected wallet equals wallet dot connect and we'll just connect this to our provider And now what we're going to do is we're going to get some current data from our position on Uniswap. So using this non-fungible position manager contract, we'll call connect. We'll pass in our connected wallet. And we will call a method called positions. And then what we're going to pass this is the token ID that we received when we originally created the position. We can see that up here. So I'm going to grab this and then we'll provide it. So when this returns, we will take the result of that and then we will get the liquidity, which is one of the things it returns for a position. It returns a number of attributes, but we only need liquidity today. So I'm going to call this total liquidity. And we will get that from the result. We'll call liquidity on it, and then we will convert that to a string. And then I'm going to get half of that liquidity. And I will do total liquidity, divide two, and then we're going to convert this to an integer just to get rid of any decimal places because it is in way and you can't have decimal places for way. If you don't do this, you're going to run into some errors later. Now we need to pass some params to the function that decreases liquidity. So we'll set those up now. So we'll say we need the token ID, which is the same thing that we provided above. We need the amount of liquidity we want to decrease it by. So I'll say half liquidity. 
we need an amount zero min and an amount one min and I'm just gonna say zero you probably shouldn't do this if you're running it on production but that works for us here and then I'm gonna set a deadline for this transaction which I'll just set for 10 minutes from now so we'll do math the floor and then we'll do date dot now and we'll divide it by 1000 to convert it into seconds and then we're gonna add 10 minutes which is 60 seconds times 10 great now we're gonna call decrease liquidity so I'm just gonna copy this line up here and instead of positions we will call decrease liquidity you can see this function on the interface for the non-fungible position manager and you can see that it takes params and those params are right here so that's that's how I know what to pass into it so we'll say params and I'm going to set a gas limit here ethers utils dot hexlify what million way is our gas limit and then when this returns I should probably call it something else I'll call it rest 2 I will do console.log rest 2 so again we are expecting these amounts to decrease by half so right now we have three zeros in the beginning of the decimal places so maybe we'll see well we will see four zeros for the uni token and then we'll see a slightly lower number here for the ETH let's run this on the command line node decrease liquidity so that went through or at least the transaction is being processed so if I check my account on etherscan you know in 10 minutes I should see this transaction having gone through successfully and if I wait here I should also see these decrease all right I just refreshed this and now we see that the amount of liquidity in this position for a Uniswap now has four zeros in the decimal place so that's down by half and then it looks like Ether is also being decreased by half so that was a success that was pretty straightforward let me know in the comments if you have questions and if you like this formatted video where I skip all the setup let me know that as well all right until next time